welcome to Mattis Milo, myself, Dave Sheehan, High Performance Consultant and dedicated for over 25 years now to educating, motivating and hopefully inspiring people just like you in being the best you that you can be in leading the best life that you can have and in creating that life experience that you want to have. We all want to live our best lives. We all want to be the best that we can be and we all want to have fun and most importantly, moving towards happiness. Everything is about moving towards happiness. This is what life should be about. This is what every day should be about. This is what should be moving about. This is this is what bringing back the smile is about and why I created bringing back the smile in the first place. Because we're living in a world where there's so much negativity, there's so much bad news. We're surrounded by it when we turn on our TV, when we turn on our radio, when we pick up the newspaper, when we pick up magazines. We're hit hard with it by even speaking to most people or even overhearing most people. So there's so much negativity around. And especially when there's been many different issues around the world and recent years, and there's always ongoing stuff. You know, we're, we're bombarded with negativity. And it's important to start bringing back the smile because mental health is suffering. And I see it myself with people of all different age groups. And you know, one thing is the younger generations never really suffered much with mental health. Of course, you would always have isolated incidences, but you know, most kids growing up, you know, they're happy go lucky, there isn't much worries, there isn't much stress because that's left for adulthood, and that's why for parents it's important for parents to, you know, to protect to some degree their kids from exposure to a lot of the stresses that are part of life. You know, it's like if they're going through things, you know, don't be exposed to those to your children. Like they don't need to know about it. There's going to be enough of their life where they're going to have to deal with things. Um, you know, so we deal with things ourselves. And But now, because of all the stuff that's going on, all the incessant negativity, the social media that's out there, that people are exposed to negativity constantly through it, and there's such a focus on image. There's so many kids now are suffering mental health issues they're suffering, suffering anxiety. Like myself, I've even had started to work with more and more kids from every kind of age, from 10, 12, 14 years of age, even who are having anxiety, who are having mental health issues. And it's definitely something that's growing and growing. And you know, collectively, as a global family, let's call it, there's definitely more and more health issues, mental health issues all the time. There's definitely less happiness, less fulfillment. You know more self-criticism more self-sabotaging more self-image issues probably more than ever before because you know it's like even the health wellness industry and uh, that people you know will look to when they want to get in better shape or have a better lifestyle to experience better health most of that is actually tormenting people's minds and psychologically ruining them and even just to folks that still is their own weight for instance or putting out perfect pictures of certain people's bodies you know, all this puts this image of perfection that this is what perfection supposedly means. This is what happiness means. This is what we need to achieve. And for so many people, it's unattainable because it's not even realistic, even for what's being put out there. That isn't even reality. That's not even reality for those particular people. You know, it's just being put out there. Like that's the problem with things these days. What you're seeing on social media that's being put out there as people's lives is rarely those people's lives. It's showing the best parts or it's showing a creative version of their life. The real version is completely different. There is no one who goes through the journey of life without challenge and obstacles. There is no one who hasn't got bad times. There's no one who doesn't have good times. We all have a mixture. It's a roller coaster. So, you know, bringing back the smile is very much about counteracting social media, mainstream media, radio, TV, newspapers, magazines. The whole psychological social conditioning is out there of what perfection actually is, what happiness is supposed to be, what success is meant to be. Bring back to smile is about you reaching inside you and you connecting with yourself. Who are you? Who are you as a person? And most importantly, what makes you happy? You know, because if you're not feeling happy with yourself, if you don't have good self-esteem, good positive self-image, you don't have confidence in yourself, you don't believe in yourself, it's very hard to feel happy. You know, life is tough enough in general without not being happy within yourself. At least when you're happy within yourself, you can counteract and deal with a lot of what life throws at you. You can keep going, you can keep digging deeper when you need to dig deeper. So this is what it gives you. And this is why I'm so passionate about helping people to get that confidence, get that self-esteem, get that positive self, self image. And you know, it's like in general, I like to get focused on lifestyle, to move away from diets, move away from short term success, move away from looking for that magic bullet and making millions and supposedly being financially free. Because 
Things don't happen that way. This isn't realistic. Things don't just change overnight, okay? Perfection, as society is teaching us, or portraying to us, doesn't exist in reality. You can get pleasure from the simplest of things. You can gain happiness from the simplest of things. You don't need to have a million in the bank. You don't need to have a six pack. You, know, you don't need to have the perfect body that magazines will put out there that you're supposed to have. All these things are just you know, created by society. And when that bar is put up there in all these different aspects, and that's what people are trying to reach, what it's guaranteeing is unhappiness. And an unhappy world is a world that's easy to control and easy to manipulate and easy to market to. Because when people have a need and a want and they have a lack in their life, if marketing, for instance, says the right words, they're hooked. They'll give it a go. They live in hope. Well, fitness and wellness and health industry is built on it, like every industry. You know, and that might sound weird. You might think, you know, fitness, health, wellness, is that not about helping me? Is that industry not there to help me? No, it's about profit, like every single industry. And these are the kind of realities that we need to wake up to. Everyone needs to wake up to the fact that industry is about profit, not about the individual. It's not about the individual becoming happier, more fulfilled, more successful. It's about making money. So you have to, again, tune into yourself. You have to live the life that you want to live. The brilliant thing is that every morning that you open these eyes, your heart pumps blood, that your lungs are pumping oxygen. You have yet another opportunity to improve your life, to become the best you that you can be, to create and live that life vision that you have in your head of what you want to, to live through. We all have a vision of what we want our life. And if you're not clear on it, you should be clear on it. Because it's very important that you put out the right energy. Like we are energy. Okay, think about people you like being around. Why do you like being around them? It's the energy to give off. You feel good before you've even opened your mouth. You probably even feel good before you've even come to the same room as them. Just the fact you know you're meeting them. Now, Contrast that with the opposite, people you don't like being around, people you find negative, people you find moly, people you find arrogant, self-absorbed, narcissistic, and so on. Before again, you even meet them, you're not feeling good about going to meet them. You don't want to, you nearly make excuses in your head. When you're with them, you don't feel good. You don't come away feeling good. You know, this is where, again, each of us has an important role to play in the general mood and happiness of everybody. Like I heard many years ago, probably about 20 years ago, when you go into a room and meet any person, when you meet one person, you're in a room full of people or you're speaking an event or anything like that, leave your mark, let them remember you, make sure they remember you. Don't be, you know, like someone who came in and no one even noticed you were there. Make sure you were noticed. But by being a, making a positive impact, not by, by being a buffoon, not by doing something ridiculous and crazy, by doing something good, by making an impact, by making people feel better about themselves, by making people feel better in general, by maybe giving a few nuggets of experience or education or tips that they can take away and will help them by listening to people if they're sharing problems with you, all that kind of stuff. And this is a way I've lived for a couple of decades now. And, you know, it's always always is nice for me to hear back from people who say what I've done is making a positive impact. It's like people who've contacted myself or their media to be about bringing back the smile and the positive impact that's made on them. You know, this is what this is about. This show is for you. The show is for you. The show isn't for me. The show isn't for little media. Of course, we're facilitating it. We're doing it. We have something we want to get from it, from ourselves in terms of, you know, whether it be the business of our media or for myself, again, the satisfaction of helping people and my own profile and my own brand. But the bottom line is we're here to help you. The show is for you. The impact it can have is massive. If you take on board what we teach you and we say to you and we try to impact you with in these shows and there's so many shows out there, not just bring back to smile, but it's up to you. You need to take control of the situation. And this is one big thing that people need to get their head around. You know, take personal responsibility for your life. And that's something I've said in so many previous episodes of Bring Back the Smile. And you will hear me saying it repeatedly because it is the most important thing. Take personal responsibility for your life. Take personal responsibility for all aspects of your life. When you truly get in a mindset where you do take personal responsibility for your life and all aspects and everything that happens, it is so um, it gives you so much freedom, frees yourself up mentally, takes you away from the blame game, takes you away from the excuses, it puts you into solution mode because you take responsibility for everything. Even just something out of your control, your reaction was within your control. That incident or what that person did wasn't in your control, for instance, but your reaction to it, you go into solution mode, is how you let your emotional state get impacted, is under your control. So we always have some element of control, even under the things that we don't control. Take the weather, for instance. If it's last rain this morning, 
I can decide not to go out for my usual 6 to 15 a.m. walk with my dog, or because it's raining, or I can go, look, it's raining, it's what it is, I can't do anything about it, off I go, out anyway, put on a jacket. You know, so we have to take personal responsibility for all aspects of our life. We have to take personal responsibility for our happiness. Like we can do a lot to make other people happy. It's like when I do the show, when I do any work with people or coaching or meet people or out socializing, you know, I want to make a positive impact. I want to help make people happy. I want to make people smile and laugh and feel better about themselves and stuff like that. But ultimately, the person themselves has to do it too. Like you have to reach inside yourself. You have to grow to love yourself. Love yourself with good self esteem, confidence, and self image, positive self image. You need to work yourself every single day. So, in terms of bringing back the smile in your own personal life, you need to work on you every single day. And it should be an evolving process for your entire life. It isn't a case you get to a stage where you feel amazing about yourself and you absolutely love yourself and it just stays like that. No, it's an ongoing process. Even as you're growing to love yourself more, even, even if you get to a stage where you truly really like yourself and love yourself, you still have to keep working on it. Like I would have grown up hating myself. Exercise, fitness, wellness, mindset, psychology, nutrition, all those things saved me from probably not even being here right now. You know, up to age 17, I had torturous time in my head. Okay, between my ears, it was torture. And I didn't want to be here. But as I got into that whole cycle of looking into how to improve myself, my psychology, my nutrition, my exercise, all different aspects of my life, it saved me, and that's why I'm so passionate about helping people just like you to do the same because we can make such little changes that have a dramatic impact. We have to work on ourselves, and since then, which is now 26, 26 years ago, I'm working on myself every single year, every single month, every single day. How can I evolve? How can I become a better version of myself? How can I improve my health and well being? How can I improve, improve my longevity? How can I contract aging? How can I make my brain work better? How can I have more happiness? How can I? move towards the life that I want, the life vision I want, because we all have a vision of what we want out of life. Now that will change over time, but we should be working towards it all the time. We have to be clear on what it is, but it all comes again from inside. We have to love ourselves. If you don't love yourself, then it's going to be very hard for you to have that life you want, to create that life you want. So it's something that you work on always. I work on myself every single day in my daily habits, my various commitments. The way prior to my health and well-being, my brain function, my mindset, my psychology, my nutrition, my movement, my exercise, my sleep, my lifestyle habits, gratitude, all these kind of things. I do all these things to work on me, but I'm also looking at how can I improve. Like in the last few weeks and months and years, I've always continuously looked at how can I improve and I've made improvements. So how can you do that? Like even for this particular month that we're in now, I start to add two or three things to improve my life my chance of creating my life vision and living my life vision and also improving the way my body works mentally and physically. So this is what you need to work towards. And when you do that, happiness becomes a lot more common. Am I happy all the time? I'm happy more often than not. Times are tough sometimes, challenges hit, but I'm better able to deal with it because again, I love myself. And again, I focus on happiness and I go into solution mode. I try not to dwell. That happens sometimes. But more often than not, I don't dwell, I just go, right, how do we solve this? How do we fix this? And go into action. But, you know, going back to, again, the key essence of bringing back the smile and happiness, you know, you need to be clear on happiness, you know, and if you're suffering any mental health issues right now, which so, so many people are, you know, it's a regular thing for many, many people, others are sporadic, others are depends on the situation, you know, you need to get clear on what happiness is for you. What makes you happy? Like even someone yesterday, you know, who was saying there were, they weren't feeling great, and this happens regularly. People contact me and say that you know they're not feeling good, they're feeling a bit lower down, and I'll always say, do something that makes you feel better, do something that has a positive impact, do something that gives you a boost. It doesn't matter how tiny the step is, you know, if it's a step forward towards any goals or anything like that, or just something you enjoy doing. It's like for me personally, when I need a boost, I listen to music. There's a certain type of music that gets my adrenaline going, it gets me feel better, that lifts my emotion, that lifts my spirit. You know, like we all we all connect with certain types of music, whatever it may be. You know, for me, it's more kind of trans music, other people's more techno music, other people's R and B, others it might be country, others it might be more, you know, Spanish type music. We have to connect and whatever will raise our spirits, raise our souls, because you know, our soul is us. And if our soul is suppressed, and if our emotional state is really, really low. You have to do something that brings it back up again. 
So for me, more often than not, it's a case of putting on some music and doing some cooking and baking. Again, it's therapeutic for me. So that's something that I enjoy doing. That's something that brings me happiness. There's something that's escapism for me. There's something that gives me, you know, a lot of satisfaction. You know, I love cooking, I love baking, I love eating, I love food, I love music, I always have. You know, so it's that combination. So when I want to escape, when I want to increase my happiness, when I want to lift my emotional state, when I want to lift my mood, when I want to feel better within myself, that's what I'm doing. That's my go to. Another escapism for me is football. I've always been a huge football fan and big Liverpool fan since I was, what, eight, seven years of age. So a long time now. So you know, I just watch some football, immerse in football, or maybe watch even an old match, even, even better than a match that I was at. So again, I've got that constant memories coming back with that experience that day, that the feelings, the emotions, the elation, all that kind of stuff. So again, it lifts your mood. So, you know, you need to identify things you can instantly use to bring back happiness. Like we have a life vision that we should be working towards that we feel will bring us happiness, like true happiness. So one thing I want to throw in there is society, like I said to start, society condition us, conditions us to believe that certain things will make us happy, that certain things mean we're successful, that certain things will bring fulfillment, when the reality is we all have our own personal perception of what that is. And what society is putting out there all the time is not accurate, is not right. For the vast majority of people, it actually guarantees that you will not be happy. It actually guarantees you will not experience fulfillment and that you will not experience success. The bar is at a level that you ain't ever going to reach. Or just looking at it and looking and trying to attain it is just too daunting, too overwhelming. So you need to decide your own perception what makes you happy. Like my idea of what makes me happy now is very different than what it was 10 years ago, very different than 20 years ago, 30 years ago. It's changed and become a lot simpler. I have very simple needs, and very simple things that bring me pleasure and make me happy. Whereas if you take 20, 30 years ago, where I would have been a bit more, I suppose, tuned into societal conditioning of it, I would have had very different ideas of what would make me happy, like most people have. But now as I've become more and more tuned with me, who I am, what I am, what I like, loving myself more, wanting the best for me, wanting the best for my loved ones wanting the best experience out of life, having simple pleasure, seeing gratitude in the simplest of things. My, my things, the things that bring me happy in some are very, very different to what they were before. And again, it's like an evolving process. We have to keep evolving all the time. Keep learning more and more about ourselves because we're complex beings. Our minds are very, very complex. We only use a couple of percent of our mind and our brain. So, you know, we have to be conscious of that fact then as well. So I want to ask you, you know, what, what can you do now? Well, let's say if you're watching this right now and you're not feeling too good, you're feeling a little bit low, feel a little bit down, feel a little bit overwhelmed, feeling a bit anxious, maybe upset, maybe even a little bit depressed, whatever it may be, you're struggling to get through the day. What can you do that will elevate your mood? What will bring you back to smile? What will bring back happiness? It could be you have a friend, colleague, associate who uh, always makes you feel better. Give them a call. Message them if you don't want to give them a call or not available. Connect. We are humans. We need connection. We need social interaction. As I said, there are people in your life or people you've come across who always elevate you and there's people who always bring you down. You start limiting your exposure to people like that or eliminating them completely. And the people you bring you up and elevate your mood, you need to start increasing your exposure to such people. And even you know, make them key parts of your circle so you've got regular contact with them. Like you need to look at your circle and see who's in it and see who pulls on you and see who adds to your life. You know, because this is something that's really important. And this is where again we care too, too much about what other people think. Forget what other people think. What makes you happy? That's all that actually matters. That's all that should matter in life. What makes you happy? You know, put on your own oxygen mask first. Take care of you first. Because if you're happy, then you make other people happy, you know, positive impact. If you've got people in your life you really care about, you'll be better around them. They'll enjoy being around you more. You'll be better able to help them as well if you feel better in yourself. Think about the times you haven't felt good within yourself. You know, have you been up for helping other people? Have you been able to help other people? Not really, have you? How have you been in terms of your impact on other people who are around you when you're feeling that way? Not too good, eh? Because you're giving up the wrong energy. So it's about getting given up the right energy. It's like for myself, I'm always trying to do my best to not dwell on things, to move forward once the solution mode, to always run around people, try to give up a positive energy, 
to not be moaning, not be making excuses, not be playing the blame game, not to, even if I'm feeling quite low, not to kind of be giving off that energy, make sure I'm trying to make a positive impact on people. Because if I'm giving off a, a good energy to them and it's helping them, that typically will elevate my own mood if I do happen to be feeling a little bit lower. You understand what I mean? So sometimes, sometimes we need to dig deep for the benefit of other people, which in turn will benefit ourselves. Does that make sense? We have to, again, make sure we're taking care of ourselves. You're the most important person in your life. This is why I stress to you. You have to develop these skills and strategies. You have to get clear in your vision of what happiness means to you. If you're not clear on what that vision is, it's going to be very hard for you to ever achieve it. So you have to know what happiness means to you. You need to have it written down. You need to remind yourself of it regularly. You need to tweak it at times when it maybe changes, because things will change. Like I have a file on my computer, it's a Google Doc, and it's got all different areas of my life and what I want out of life in those areas and the action steps I need to take. And it seems that I change regularly, but I have at least a clear picture of vision written down that then gives me pictures in my mind of where I want to go, what do I want, what do I want out of life. And then it's up to me then to take the necessary action steps and make it a reality. Because this is the beauty of it. We all have the power to create whatever we want in life. And everything that we're experiencing is something that we've created. As I said to start, take personal responsibility for your life. And even if other people have played a role in you getting to a place now that you're not particularly content and happy with, you played a role in, in allowing them to allow you to get to this point. This is where you, we must take personal responsibility for absolutely everything that happens in our life. And if you can do that, you can get to that point where you truly take personal responsibility for every experience you have. That is completely liberating. That would change your life forever. That would have such an impact. It would be incredible. It would give you such a different mindset. It would give you such a different life experience. So, you know, keep remembering that happiness is all that matters. You need to keep drilling this into yourself. Okay? People think so much about money, and people think so much about power, and people think so much about social status, and people think so much about perfect bodies, and cars, and material things, and all this kind of stuff. When at the end of the day, all the three matters your own happiness. For people who live in Amazon rainforests who have absolutely nothing, no connection with what we call the real world, who have no material goods, no money, no nothing, and they're happy out because they're living with the simplest of pleasures. They're living with gratitude, gratitude for the basic things. And this is why gratitude is so powerful. And on previous episodes of Bring Back the Smile, I've spoken of gratitude because it's a mentality and a habit you need to really get on board with it. You truly need to get on board with, you know, adding more gratitude to your life. Like every morning when I open my eyes, the first thing I do is I think of and often note three things I'm grateful for. Whereas from that morning, that day, the previous day, in general, I know three things I'm grateful for. So, you know, I'm starting off my day with gratitude. That's a powerful thing to do. I typically end my day with gratitude. Anytime I'm feeling a little bit low, down, overwhelmed, bewildered with the world, I'll have a little moment to think about, you know, what am I grateful for here? What have we got to be grateful for? So, you know, use these tools, use these strategies. You know, write things down, having a life vision. Make sure you've got a life vision. It's something that's really crucial. Be very clear on what your life vision is. What is it? What do you want? Because if you don't have the destination, it's very hard to get there. Okay? Very, very hard to get there. Now, just while we're on that, actually, in terms of destination and getting it, the journey is the one you need to focus on. Like, have a clear destination. Have a clear idea of where it is you want to get to. It's important we have that. We have that goal. Whether it's a big goal, it's far off into the future, that's a huge goal that nearly scares us, or it's a goal that you have for next week. Know that, but don't dwell on it. Instead, put your time and energy into the journey and being present in the journey, because the journey is where all the learnings are. The journey is where all the highs and lows are. The journey is the emotional roller coaster. The journey is where you can grow as a person. You know, you grow and develop life skills. You know, you learn from experiences. If you're not present in that, if you're too focused on the end, you miss out on all the enjoyment that you get from the journey. And also the end, when you get to the final destination, is very disappointing. And then the climax, because the moment, the end moment, is euphoric, depending on what it is, when when the medal, getting something, achieving something, but it's it's temporary, it's just a moment. Then straight away it has to be what's next. So you know the happiness and joy is like so temporary there, whereas along the journey it can be 
huge. It can be for most of it. So become very present. Become very present on the journey. Focus on the journey. Be mindful of the goal and the destination. But be very present on the journey. That's something that's very, very important. And again, make sure your ladder is against the right wall. Make sure you're going for the right goal. Make sure you're very focused on what it is you want to achieve. Remember, it's your life. It's not society's life. It's not the neighbor's life. It's not even your partner's life. It's good if you're in tune and on the same wave in terms of what you want out of life. But the bottom line is you have to be in your journey. You have to be on what is it you truly want out of life. This way you have to be clear on what is happiness to you. We talk about bringing back your smile. You bring back your smile, you're going to bring back the smile to many people. Because like I said, if you're going around, you're really happy and you give off your energy, you're going to have an impact, a positive impact on many people who come across your path. You may not even speak to them, just passing them, your energy you're giving off, they will pick up on it. And we're vibration beings, we pick up on each, on each other's vibrations. That's why there's times you go into a room or meet a person or come into contact with someone in some way and you don't necessarily know why you're not feeling good, but it's the energy, just like the opposite. You feel good. You may not even have spoken to someone. Certain people have an aura, certain people give off a good energy. That's because, again, they work on themselves, they love themselves, or they're consciously living their life, they're being present with their life, they're focused again on happiness and fulfillment and, and success in their own perception of what each of those words mean. Because, again, we all have a person's perception of what they are, we all have our own idea of what they mean. That's why it's so important for you to work towards your perception, your perception of happiness. So, have your long-term vision. Identify what will make you happy. Identify what action steps are. Pull all the way back to now. What is the next action step you can take? Adopt gratitude. When you feel low, when your emotional state is down too low and you need to lift, lift and elevate it a bit, decide on how you're going to do that. We're all different. Like I said, for me, cooking, baking, and listening to a certain music, that does it for me. You know, that does it for me. That's my go to sport is to some degree, and even certain documentaries and movies. But my main one is music, particularly kind of music, because I like all kinds of music, but trance music, or baking, or cooking. That's my go to if I want to feel a little bit happier. Making those people who matter most to me in life, making them happy, doing things for them, that brings me a lot of joy and happiness too. I'm very much a giver that way, but important thing about being a giver. Very easy to be a giver and not take care of yourself as well at the same time. So completely not take care of yourself. Remember, put on your own oxygen mask first. That's something to learn over time where I was giving so much to other people, and especially those I cared about, and neglecting myself and your, at the same time. Now I make sure I'm still taking care of me in many different aspects, but I take the best possible care I can of others. Because it's a win-win then. You know, and that's the way it should be. You get what you want to get from giving and helping other people, but you're also taking care of you. Because you're the most important person in your life. And when you take care of you, you can take better care of other people. And that's how it works. Okay? So just remember the most important thing happiness is the end game. Happiness is the end game. Every morning you open these eyes, your heart beats blood, your lungs process oxygen. Be grateful, number one. Number two, be determined to make the day count. And take the steps required to bring more happiness into your life to move you closer to your goals, to take better care of yourself, to grow more self-love, to grow more positive self-image of yourself, to have the confidence to stride through life, knowing you're making a difference to yourself and to other people in the way you're living. And as I said, that doesn't even have to be contact, just you going through life with the right positive outlook and giving off positive energy will impact other people around you, anyone who comes in contact with you in any shape or form. That's the power we all have. The world is energy. We're all contributing to it, whether it be negative energy or positive energy. Be on this side, be on the positive energy side, because the world is a far better place when you have positive energy. And there's a lot of shit going on in the world now. There always has been. But what's important is that we move towards the light. We move towards you know, what is best for the world, what solves big problems, what solves problems in our own life, what helps us to help other people be happy, and again, going right back to what makes us happy. Because when you're happy, you make other people happy. It's just how it is, it's just how it works. So again, bring back the smile, bring back your smile. Think about when you smile, you feel better. Why do we love watching comedies? 
Why do we love laughing? Why do we love jokes? Even just looking at yourself in the mirror and smiling, you feel better. You can't stop it. It's inevitable. So you need to bring back the smile, and that's what this show is about. I want to give you the tips and strategies and share my own life experiences and those of other people that we have as guests to help you to bring back the smile. I want to give you the tips and strategies and tools that if you implement them, you will experience more happiness in time once you're just taking action repeatedly. That's what's all about, take action repeatedly. So I hope this episode of Bring Back a Smile has helped you in some way. I hope it's been thought-provoking. I hope it's made you maybe look at your life in a different way. I hope it's made you reflect a little bit and decide on some different ways and behaviors you're going, to, you're going to adopt, actions you're going to take. Just keep in mind yourself all the time. Happiness. It's all that matters. Keep asking, asking yourself about everything you're doing. Will this make me happier? Is this moving me towards happiness? And then, as I said, you know, use the things that elevate your mood and bring your emotional state up. Use them when you need them. It's crucial. We can do destructive things like people do. You want to escape or drink and drugs and such things. Or we can use things that will be productive and elevate our mood, but in a positive way. Like I said, whether it be music or can be baking, cooking, or whatever it may be for you. Elevate your mood. Okay. That's it for me, Dave Sheen, High Performance Consultant here on Bring Back the Smile with Learn Media TV. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Keep focused, keep moving forward, keep moving towards happiness. Remember, happiness is all that matters. Hey there, and welcome to this week's 